Hello and welcome to uh, our last module in Cognition for this summer. Uh, this will be module 8. In this module we'll be talking about formal logic and reasoning, we'll discuss problem solving, and then we'll finish up with decision making. So we'll start uh, in uh, this first lecture in module 8 uh, with a brief look at what's called syllogistic reasoning. Uh, we'll start with a little introduction to reasoning and then we'll talk about uh, what a syllogism is and what uh, syllogistic reasoning is and what it can and can't tell us. Um, those of you who have taken um, logic from philosophy uh, will be familiar with this kind of uh, reasoning. So let's start with a basic introduction to reasoning. Reasoning refers to our ability to determine the validity of a conclusion based on statements thought to be true. So one of the things we'll be doing is uh, looking at how we can analyze a statement to determine whether or not it's logically valid, um, whether it involves inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning, um, and what valid conclusions we can make based on the evidence provided to us. Inductive reasoning occurs when we try to make general statements based on individual observations. This will become important when we start talking about uh, stereotyping and some stuff done in decision making. Deductive reasoning is when we use a stated premise to make conclusions that can be logically inferred from them, so we can deduce a conclusion. And that's primarily what we'll be doing with conditional reasoning, which will be the next module. So that gets us then to syllogistic reasoning and syllogisms. Syllogisms are a three-part statement logical form. Uh, the first two parts state the premises or statements taken to be true, and then the third part states a conclusion based on the premises. Uh, syllogisms are sort of like the haiku of logic and critical thinking. Um, very short, oftentimes stated in very obtuse, like all ARB kinds of things. Um, but the thing we have to do is start to think about the structure of the argument. And so the goal here is to get you thinking about what can I logically conclude uh, based on the premises. So for example, uh, the first thing you have to realize about syllogistic reasoning is the fact of the matter is not relevant. What we look at are the premises and whether or not the um, conclusion based on the premises uh, is logically valid or not. So all poodles are animals, all animals are wild, therefore all poodles are wild. That would be a logical conclusion based on the two stated premises. So this is generally how this is often uh, stated. We substitute words for, so if all of the category A are part of the category B, and all of the category B are part of category C, then it's logically valid to conclude that all of the A's are part of the category C. And we can use uh, a Venn diagram uh, like this uh, to illustrate what we mean. So A is all included in B, B is all included in C, so therefore A is all included in C. Right back to our premise, all poodles are dogs, all dogs are animals, therefore all poodles are animals. So if poodles are a subcategory of dogs and dogs are a subcategory of animals, therefore all poodles are animals. So some other examples, so if all A's are part of the category B and some of the category B are in the category C, it is illogical to conclude that some A's are part of the category of C. We don't actually know that. So there are two possibilities. So here there's this possibility. Um, so some, all A's are B's. And some of the B's also are C. Uh, so it's possible that none of the A's are uh, at all included in the category of C. So all polar bears are animals, some animals are white, therefore some polar bears are white. Not logically valid based on that. And while factually true, the syllogism is not logically valid. So if we have no A are part of the category B, and no B are a part of the category of C, we cannot conclude that no A's are C's, because it's entirely possible that this is true or that this is true. So both of these are these situations here on the right are logically possible based on the premises presented in the syllogistic argument. So a lot of people question whether or not this sort of syllogistic reasoning has any ecological validity. There are some instances where uh, this comes up 
And more importantly, it is learning to understand how to form a logical conclusion. What is the evidence really telling us? And what can we conclude based on that evidence? And that's really the important part of understanding why syllogistic reasoning becomes important. All right, well, that's our quick introduction to syllogistic reasoning. And our next lecture, we'll pick up with conditional reasoning.